God for revelation knowledge. Thank God that the entrance of His word giveth light. We are enlightened this night as we receive the word. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands together. Let's celebrate our papa. Let's celebrate our mama in the house. Do that with a clap. Do that with a shout. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Welcome, sir. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Lift your hands and put those hands together. Let's shout for joy as we receive our papa, Dr. Abel Damina. Glory. Amen. Father, we rejoice that tonight we are filled with all the fullness of God. Revelation knowledge keeps growing big on our inside. Light shining in our minds. We walk in the light. There is no confusion among us. There is no error in this environment. We walk in the precision and the accuracy of your word. And we rejoice that the victory that is ours keeps finding expression on daily basis. Thank you, Lord, that your word rules and reigns in our hearts. Bodies and yokes are destroyed. And by the end of this service, we'll all be the better for it. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together as we say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, and every believer says a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and all of our social media community, brothers and sisters online. We love you. We're glad to have you in the service again today. We also want to welcome the Aquaibom State community connected to this service right now by way of Comfort FM, Excel FM, Radio Aquaibom, Passion FM, Inspiration FM, and Heritage FM. We're so glad to welcome all of you to the service. Do me the favor of calling a friend, a family member, a loved one in the village in the capital city wherever around this whole community ask them to tune to this radio station right now life is flowing through the airwaves our social media community let's get the word to the ends of the earth help me share the video put them on as many groups as possible let's flood the earth with the truth of christ i also want to welcome all our campuses around the world brothers and sisters we're so glad to welcome all of you to this great time of fellowship in the word of his grace are we excited to be in the house tonight. Can we celebrate our presence in this house with a shout? Glory! Amen! Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible, and your phones. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self tonight as we get into the word of his grace. Mm -mm -mm. Glory to God. We've been looking at in Christ. The brother Paul's revelation of identification in Christ. And we've been on this for quite a few now. And we're going to be on this for quite a few more. Because light is shining. Are you getting better every day? Are you learning? Light is shining and we're enjoying these truths that are coming from the scriptures. The book of Second Peter chapter 3 verse number 16. An account 16. As also in all his epistles. Speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Yesterday we looked at that word rest, and we say it is the word strebolu, S-T-R-E-B-L-O-O. It means to turn. Strebolu. It also means to to torture from the word strefo, S-T-R-E-P-H-O, which is to convert. In other words, Brother Paul, I mean, Brother Peter is giving credence to what Brother Paul wrote, and he says that honest interpretation and study will give you a definite message. Honest interpretation and study 
will give you a definite message of the Pauline epistles. And therefore, we must avoid the tendencies of converting them to something else. For those making notes, I repeat. What Brother Peter was saying is that honest interpretation and study will give you a definite message of the Pauline epistles. And therefore, we must avoid the tendencies of converting them to something else. Like I've always said, the scriptures can never mean today what it never meant when it was first written. There is consistency of theology. Truth is consistent. That's the character of truth. So if what we are preaching is the truth, in another 25 years, we should be saying the same things. We should be saying the same things in another 25 years. There should be no improvement on the truth. That is, you don't say what was not said for the sake of today's relevance. You don't say what was not said for the sake of today's relevance. So brother Paul's letters therefore were very weighty because of the insight that he had about salvation. Remember what brother Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the Sophia given unto him, have written unto you specifically the Sophia, the wisdom or the insight given unto him. And then brother Peter said, when people do not pay attention, calm down and patiently, precisely study the Pauline teachings, they are, they are, they are looked upon as unlearned and ignorant. And he says, such people, they rest with the scriptures. They, they, they turn, they torture, they convert the scriptures and make the scriptures say what it was not saying because of the weight of insight, the Sophia, with which brother Paul addressed the subject of salvation from the Old Testament. Now let's look at an example. We have seen Peter and Paul and they had a few contacts together. I can recall that in Acts chapter 9, when Ananias commended Paul, eventually Peter got involved. Then along the line, Paul was sent to Tarsus by Peter. Then we did not have any contact between them again till Acts chapter 15. Well, in the middle of it, there's still a bit when Agabus prophesied and Paul and Barnabas were sent to take relief to Jerusalem. Of course, in Acts chapter 12, Paul was in Jerusalem when Herod died. It was after that he fulfilled his ministry and went back to Antioch. But notice that Paul made reference to Galatians chapter 2 about how he went up to Jerusalem by revelation because Jerusalem is like you're traveling up country. Now a preacher that wants to be naughty or a preacher that wants to be funny when he read, reads where brother Paul says, I went up by revelation, he interprets it to mean that it is revelation that makes you go up in life, in business, in career. That's, 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 that's very, very, that's very mischievous. When he said, I went up, he was talking about the geographical location of, of Jerusalem. I went up by revelation means like traveling up country, and so having said that, we don't have much contact readily seen in the book of Acts. But, but there's one you know, place where it was a doctrinal contact that brother Paul and Peter had. And that was in Acts chapter 15. And we will see a synergy in brother Peter and Paul. In Acts chapter 15, there were two issues that arose here. The very first one is in Acts chapter 15 verse number 1. Acts of the Apostles 15 verse number 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. <laughs> you cannot be saved. That means how the Bible documentation is done is that it was summarized. 
So what we just read now is a summary of a lot that was said. That means a doctrine can be summarized and say this is actually what they are saying like high points or like bullet points of a discourse. That word they taught there is present continuous. They taught. That means they were teaching and they kept teaching. So they were teaching. You know, they were holding programs. They were writing books. They were on television. They were on radio. They were publishing magazines. So they were teaching. It was an ongoing invasion of, of this, this stuff that they brought to the people. And this was a sect, you know. And they were saying that if a man is not circumcised, he cannot be saved. And they brought this to the Gentile nation. This group, they taught, the first thing they said is, remember, they are Jews. They came down from Judea. Of course, Paul and Barnabas, you know, had a serious problem with them. Because look at verse 2 of that same chapter. Acts 15 to When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles. You see that up again? They should go up, not up in life, not up in business. They should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question about this question now that's the first issue that if you do not observe the law of moses you cannot be saved second issue that arose in acts 15 is in verse 5 of the same chapter acts 15 verse 5 but there arose of certain of the sect of the pharisees which believed saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Not to even advise. To command them to keep the law of Moses. So this is a very serious issue now. I'm not sure how related they are. You know, both the chapter 5 and chapter 2. Look at the word rose. They are rose. It's the word exanistimai in the Greek. E X A. N-I-S-T-I-M-I. Exanistimai. It means they grew. They rose. That is they grew. So it means this doctrinal opinion as it were grew over time. It grew over time. The way it was written is like verse 1. You know, it, it, it's like verse 1 happened on Monday, verse 2 happened on Tuesday. But that's not exactly what happened because this happened over the space of months and even years, maybe one or two years. So it grew in influence. And what they were saying is, you can check out that word in Mark, write it down for further study. Mark 12, 19 and Luke 20, 28. It grew. He says, a sect of the Pharisees which believed. There was something peculiar about them. They were former Pharisees or they were still Pharisees, but they were believers in Jesus. So therefore, they had a stream of Bible interpretation that shouldn't have connected. But somehow, they found a way of balance. You know all these people that like balance. They found a way of balance in what they had believed. What they had received. And what they believed before. They found a way of balancing it. To be able to combine it and practice all at the same time. Some people call it balance. Jesus said you cannot pour new wine into old wine skin but these guys found a way to disprove Jesus to prove Jesus wrong you know and I hope you know the sarcasm there to put old wine into new wine skin they were able to do that the word sect is from the word heresies heresies the Greek word h-e-i 
R E S I E S, which is used for an opinion, heresies, a sect, an opinion. Oftentimes, it's used for division as well, but here it is used for an opinion, an opinion that causes division. And interestingly, Paul himself was called the same. They called Paul a, a sect. They say Paul was coming with a sect. In Acts 24 verse 5 and 14. Give me verse 5 and 14 quickly. Acts 24, 5 and 14. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. That was how they blackmailed Paul. Look at verse 14. Another blackmail they gave him. But this I confess unto thee that after the way which they call heresy, it's like we teach sound doctrine. And you just see some people, when they just hear us start talking, heresy, heresy. They don't even know the meaning of heresy. Heresy. So worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. In the law and in the prophets. But look at what Paul says in his letters. First Corinthians 11, 19. First Corinthians 11, verse 19. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Heresies. Paul is talking to the church in Corinth. And he says there is heresies in that church. This has to do with those in the assembly of saints. That is they had groups in the church. You know those people that like groups in church. Groups, 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 groups. Class, class. They like class. You put two, three people together and you call them your bodies. That is your little sect. And you know in that your small group you people think you have too much epignosis. You think you have too much revelation knowledge. You cannot inter. You can't play with other brothers and sisters. They look inferior to you. You know those those sect, those heresies, that opinion group. You know those that always like to look spiritual. Every time you see them in their group, they are they are always speaking in tongues. They greet in tongues. They even eat food in tongues. You wave them, the Nianu Jakatoya. Always, they feel too much. And Brother Paul says, Corinth, you guys have these heresies. It's in that church in Corinth. Little, little groups. You know, where married people feel inferior to single people. Or where single people feel inferior to married people. You know, those kind of. Brother Paul says, it's in the church at Corinth. They had these groups of folks who were wealthy in influence and affluence and somehow they found it difficult because they feel they are too wealthy. They cannot relate with low class people. You know those kind of churches where you have VIP parking one. You have VVIP parking. That's for senior financial sponsors. Then you have parking. Parking one, parking two, parking three. The rest. And there are VVIP protocol officers. Dressed in a different form. They are the ones that serve VVIP. And then there is another group of VIP protocol. Then the rest of the protocol members are assigned to the masses. Those kind of churches. You know they are there. You are laughing because you don't know. But they are there. If you travel a little you will see it. And Brother Paul said, these sects, you have them in your congregation in the church at Corinth. So somehow it became a group in that church. And you know, it's very easy to have that group in a church. I have warned you about it in this church and I've told you it's not supposed to be, exist at all. It's not supposed to exist officially, non-officially. It's not supposed to exist. Paul calls it a heresy. It's not supposed to exist in the body of Christ. 
What we have in groupings doctrinally in the word of God will be elders, which is leadership and membership. Finish. Elders, leadership, and membership. Finish. And the reason for the elders is to serve the membership. Are we teaching here? That's the reason for the elders. Not, not wealth, not age, not influence or marital status. No such groupings in the body of Christ. So he mentioned, and you know there are churches, I, I, I've been in one where you have um, Yoruba Brethren's Association, Igbo Brethren Association, Ibibio Brethren, in a church, like a political institution, after service, all Ibibio Brethren, we have meeting. Igbo Brethren, we are meeting on meet that side. Yoruba brethren in the body of Christ. Brother Paul calls it in Galatians a walk of the flesh. That is a walk of the flesh. And Brother Paul was dealing with this. So he mentions that this is heresies. He points to let's see how truthful you are to the body of Christ. If you can create a sect based on how and where you live. Galatians 5.20 mentions this as a, as a work of the flesh. The church is the body of Christ. One body, one blood, and we are not defined by age or status. We are not defined by male or female. We are defined by the sacrifice of Christ. We are not defined by the color of cars we drive and the size of shoes we wear. We are defined by the selfless sacrifice of Jesus Christ. One blood, one body. Am I communicating at all? So in Brother Paul's soonnesses, he began to deal with that issue. And tomorrow, I'm going to get into some of these heresies. And I'm going to deal with them even as we continue with this study. Now let's get back to John chapter 14 verse 26. <clears throat> John chapter 14 verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. Remember again, we are still examining Brother Paul's unique revelation and insight that has to do with identification, the in Christ. I want us to look at the word bring to your remembrance. It means a call to mind. A call to mind. It is a Greek word, hupomimnesco. Hupomimnesco, spelled as H-U-P-O-M-I-M-N-E-S-K-O. Hupomimnesco. Hupo means to make you do something. In fact, that's a bit light. To cause you to do something. To cause you to do something. All right? Hupo. Mimnesco means attention. Actually, for emphasis, you will see it in Hebrews 8.12. Hebrews, the use of that word, Hebrews 8.12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. It's not a loss of memory, but a paying of attention. Their sins and iniquities will I pay no attention to, or will I pay attention to no more. The word remember. You will also see that in Hebrews 2, 6, where he used the word mindful. You will also see that word in Luke 23, 42. The guy who was a thief on the cross. Hebrews 23, 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Put me in mind. Put me in mind. So therefore, by saying he will bring to your remembrance, it therefore brings in the supernatural element of the four gospels. It brings in the supernatural element 
of the four gospels because it is the spirit's work to bring to their attention. So that will be in the midst of several things. In the midst of several incidences. They will therefore have their attention called to some things. Of course, they will still use their memory. It's not like the spirit of God will bring them a vision. They will still use their memory, but the spirit of God will highlight. He will call their attention to certain things. But in other words, those events will be brought to their attention. That's why they cut off unnecessary things. It shows you that there are some things that are not important. For example, what kind of food did Jesus eat? How old was he? When was his birthday? What was his shoe size? What kind of shoes was he wearing? Did he sleep on bed or on mat? All of those details are not in scripture. That was not Jesus' redemptive work. Those details do not contribute to his mission of salvation. It had no redemptive value. Hence, it was not documented. So they brought in only the relevant things that should be learned. Yes, there were eyewitnesses like we said in Luke chapter 1 verse 1. Look at Luke chapter 1 verse 1 and 2. They were eyewitnesses. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Next verse. Next verse. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the world. They were eyewitnesses and ministers of the world. That is, they were eyewitnesses and preachers. So whatever they were paying attention to was of vital importance to the message of the gospel. That's why a Peter will say something like, Acts chapter 1 verse 21 and 22. Acts chapter 1, wherefore of these men which have, a, which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Next verse. Beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken off from us. Must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. That means the things that were important to be documented were the things that happened from John the Baptist baptism till his resurrection and ascension. Anything before that was not vital because it did not add or contribute to his redemptive assignment. Are we communicating here? So the baptism of John up to the resurrection and ascension are of weightier importance than the things that happened before it. All are important, don't get me wrong, but I'm talking about the ones that were in order of importance. We are from the baptism of John to his ascension. So the spirit of truth therefore brings those facts. He makes them available and he makes them usable in the gospel of his son. He brings those facts. He makes them available and usable in the gospel of his son. So these folks have basically brought those realities. The things Jesus has done, the things Jesus has said, and they are now translating to what they are explaining to the world. Until the new birth, they didn't have a clarity on why Jesus did the things he did. And why he said the things he said. But in the resurrection, they were, and there comes unto them revelation knowledge in the resurrection. So they were able to pick the events. That's very skillful spiritually. To translate the events and the words of Jesus to the doctrine of the church today. That was very skillful. So in Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, Matthew 28, 19 and 20, Jesus, upon his resurrection, now instructed them, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Next verse. Teaching them 
to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. The word matatio, matatio, go and make disciples. Go and turn people into students, into learners. And so what they had simply done is their minds go back to the sermon on the mount. Remember? Teaching them all things I have commanded you. So immediately they hear that after resurrection, their minds go back to the sermon on the mount. Their minds go back on the parables of Jesus. The examples he gave. And now they have clarity. Because the things he said were a fulfillment of the things that were said in the Old Testament books. And since that's the gospel, they will now preach all over the world. They have found a teacher of the word and his clarity to them. And they're able to say that to the whole world today. And so you must see how there's a synergy to all that. Now the great point will be the resurrection. That's the great point. The resurrection. Where the spirit of truth is given. In the resurrection. And now the spirit of truth calls to remembrance the clarity of truth. And now they can present that clarity to the world. So he brings that to mind and they begin to teach that. John brings us into what this is. In John chapter 1 verse 1. Stay with me. Are you still here? John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the world. And the world was with God. And the world was God. He begins his own eyewitness by saying, John begins his own eyewitness by saying, in the beginning was the word. As though he knew that. But you know, that's an afterthought. Okay? <laughs> I've always told you, John cheated all of them. He cheated Matthew, Mark, Luke. Because while Matthew Mark Luke was saying there's a virgin and the virgin was going out with a boyfriend called Joe and an angel of the Lord came to the virgin and said, Hail thou Mary, thou art highly favored, blah, blah, blah. And there were some shepherds and there was a star and there was Herod and they had a dream. All those are eyewitness details. John doesn't tell you all of that because that is not relevant to where we're going. He just goes straight in the beginning was the word as if he always knew it but this was a post resurrection reality he only understood this after Jesus rose are you following and he didn't write in a hurry he waited until he understood the gospel properly he now wrote and when he was writing he cut out all stuff and began with in the beginning was the word. The word word is the word logos. The logos of God. Which means God's personal message. In the beginning was God's personal message. Logos. In the beginning was Theos Logos. Theos Logos. That is every other person came to speak for him. But this one is not speaking for him. This one is him speaking for himself. This is God's personal message. Remember in John chapter 1 verse 1, John is not writing about the resurrection, even though he is writing from the resurrection. He is still writing about the incarnation as eyewitness, but on a higher plane. He calls it God's personal message. So in other words, the incarnation of Jesus is God's personal message. Jesus is the Logos. And then he brings in a system of truth. Please pay attention, I beg of you. He brings in a system of truth or a system of teaching that we all have to look into today. 
He says, in the beginning, that's the Hebrew, I mean, that's the Greek word, Ike. Ike. Un Ike, sorry, Hebrew word, Un Ike. Beginning is the word Ike. Ike means Genesis. In the beginning. Ike, Genesis. So they are referring to the book of Genesis. In the beginning was the message, the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. In the beginning, which is the Greek translation of the same. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, Bereshit. Bereshit. For those writing the Hebrew, Bereshit is B-E-R-E-S-H-I-S-T. Bereshit. B-E-R-E-S-H-I-S-T. Bereshit. The Hebrew, Logos. 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 Greek word taught idea logos is spelled as l o g o s so in the beginning therefore he is speaking in explanation from genesis that is john's style of writing he is letting you know that jesus was present in the writings of Moses. In the beginning. In Genesis. Was the world. Jesus was present. In the writing of Moses. You can't call him Archaeologos. And he is not there. At the very Archae. At the very beginning. Okay, A K E I. So at the very beginning, Bereshit, he was. He was. Then he begins to explain. John gets doctrinal here. And I suggest that he had to go this route because by the time you go to John 20 31. He now says, this is written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. That's the purpose. So he said, he wrote the book of John to bring you persuasion, to convince you. So in other words, he is bringing a logos from the life of Jesus for men to hear and believe. What's the usefulness of the four gospels? It was for men to believe in Jesus. The usefulness of the four gospels is for men to believe in Jesus. So it will carry an evangel tone. The four gospels. Evangel means... You are sharing the message for men to be persuaded about, to believe, evangel, a news. So back to John chapter 1 verse 1 again. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He placed around a word, genomai, genomai in the Greek. G-I-N-O-M-A-I Genomai Which means to be Genomai To be or to become Or to be present To be, to become, to be present Genomai Three times In the beginning was the word And the word was with God And the word was God The same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life. All things were made by him. 
Then he mentions things that you are not likely to see. When he say, or when we say in the beginning, the things you are likely to see are moon and sun and stars. And if you look at moon and sun and stars, you get lost. You miss the communication. Because moon and sun and stars will block your mind from the communication. Like Paul said, when Moses is read, there is a veil because of his mode of communication. So if you're looking at moon and sun and stars, you miss. So John is saying, uh-uh. In the beginning was the word. That is, in the beginning... In the writing of Moses was the message. In the writing of Moses was the message. The message was there. God's personal message was there. Then he says, where was it? In him was life. And the life was the light of man. Oh, Jesus. In him was life, and the life was the light. So he calls the message light. Light in the beginning. The logos of God. The life was the light. Then he says, John was one. He bore witness of that light. Therefore, you must see that light present in the writings of Moses. You must see that light. That's why he wrote that light in Genesis 1-3. He wrote the light. And... Genesis 1, 3, put it up quickly. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God said, light be light was. He wasn't talking about the sun. He wasn't talking about the moon. He was talking about the message. The message, God's message, God's personal message, the Logos. Then in verse 14 of John 1, stay with me, John chapter 1 verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. <clears throat> uh, the word genomai genomai is there again in verse 14 and dwelt amongst us this is skillful writing this is skillful writing he just moved from Genesis which is where we have the message and dwelt among us. Are you following? He moved from Genesis, light, delight, dwelt among us. Very skillful. Pay attention. That's the language of Exodus. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's the language of Exodus. Genesis, then Exodus. Jesus, his pattern of teaching. Don't forget, 40 days, beginning at Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and all the prophets, he expounded and he taught them in a, in a sequence, in a sequential manner. It was not scattered. 
So now they are communicating the same following the pattern laid down by Jesus beginning from Moses' pattern. Consistency of theology. Genesis, then Exodus. Two things that refer to Jesus. The word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. The word skino, skino. The word skino is a tent or a tabernacle. Skino. In Exodus 40, when you get home, you can read the whole chapter. It's where you have the tabernacle. At the very end of Exodus, you have the tabernacle. So, the same terminology he starts with Genesis, he proceeds to Exodus in his writing. What does that mean? It means that Jesus weighs heavily on Genesis. He taught heavily from Genesis. And definitely, he is tabernacling in the flesh. God tabernacling in the flesh is what Moses wrote as tabernacle in Exodus. He began in Genesis as the message. In Exodus, the message tabernacled among us. John puts it, the word in the beginning, the word dwelt among us. Genesis, Exodus. In John 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 14. Are you all following? Stay with me. Stay with me. So, definitely, with much speaking, because the people were a people of unbelief in Exodus. So, that terminology, skino, which is tabernacle, amongst us, is an old language. So, Jesus' earthly life is the explanation of that tabernacle. His earthly life. But it always comes to the unrenewed mind or the unenlightened mind. It will appear to them in that format. It takes truth and faith to see that this is pointing to the incarnation of God in a man. The incarnation of God in a man. I wrote a book a few years ago. I don't know how many of you have read that book. If you have not, go and get it now and read it today. God in a man. I wrote it years ago. One of my earliest books. God in a man. It will help you with understanding all this that I'm breaking down now. All right? Now, God in a man. Tabernacle. Tabernacle amongst us. Let's look at an example. <clears throat> 1 John chapter 1 verse 5. Now before 1 John 1 5, let's start with John 1 5. The same John. John, gospel, John 1 5. <clears throat> Can we all read together? Everybody want to go? And the light shineth where? And the darkness comprehended it not. Now remember we have life which is light. Huh? Life which is light. So when God said light be, what was God also saying? Life be. Because light is life. Life is light. And the life which is light dwelt where? Amongst us. Are you following? Okay. Stay with me. Don't forget he is taking his verbiage from where? John is taking his verbiage from where? Genesis. So what is the darkness? The darkness is the Greek word skotia. Skotia. S-K-O-T-I-A. Skotia. Taken from the word skotos. S-K-O-T-O-S. Skotia. Taken from the word skotos. Look at how Jesus uses the word darkness. 
Look at how Jesus uses the word darkness. Matthew 10, 27. <clears throat> quickly, quickly. Matthew 10, 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what you hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. Luke 12, 3. Luke 12, 3. Luke 12, 3. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which you have spoken in the ear in closest shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. He is using Moses' language. Jesus is using Moses' language in Genesis 1-3. God said, let there be light. And light was. In Matthew 4, 16, you can write that down for study. More often than not, look at Matthew 6, 23. Matthew chapter 6, verse 23, Jesus still speaking. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. And if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Are you following how great is that darkness? The light of the body. So Jesus is using Moses' explanation in Genesis to explain what darkness and light is. He is not calling darkness the sun and its absence. He is not calling darkness night and day. It's a spiritual principle. And every time he talks about darkness, in this light, he is talking about men. And John is saying, that was in the Achaia, in the beginning. So John is writing from Genesis. Matthew 8, 12, write down for further study. Matthew 8, 12. Matthew 22, 13. Matthew 25, 30. Matthew 25, 30. Parables, parables, parables. In Matthew 27, 45, he is referring to physical darkness. Matthew 27, 45, physical darkness. Is it not interesting that when Jesus was crucified, there was darkness in the whole land? Huh? <laughs> Is it not so coincidental, but also coincidental that when Jesus, I mean when Judas went out to receive money from the buyers and to bring them to Jesus, it was also in the dark. It was also in the dark. Quite a picture, isn't it? Quite a picture. I believe the writers were deliberate using the literal to explain the figurative. They were very intentional. So in other words. You find the darkness there. Refers to man's actions. Or the state of man's heart. John 21 is literal. John chapter 20 verse 1. The first day of the week. Come at Mary Magdalene early. When it was yet dark. Physical. But remember John 8, 12. Put it up. I want to read that one. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You are not hearing. Shall have the light of life. In him was life, and the life was the light when in the beginning he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life so jesus is using moses' words john 12 35 for further study john 12 46 john 12 35 john 12 46 Darkness there is spiritual in nature. Spiritual. Luke 176. Put it up. That's also spiritual in nature. Look at the way he puts it, the writer of Luke. 
and thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. Next verse. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of sins. Next verse. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us. Next verse. To give light to them that sit where? In darkness. Where? In the shadow of death. To guide our feet into the way of peace. So darkness there is spiritual. Scotus. Where we have the word scotia. John 3, 19. John chapter 3, verse 19. Put it up for me. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So their deeds is the darkness. Light is come into the world. So he's calling our minds to Moses' darkness in Genesis. Because that's where John is writing from. The Scotus. Now, the Scotia. 1 John 1, 5. 1 John chapter 1, verse number 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you. That God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. John is using the same verbiage in his writing. In him is no darkness at all. So, why he had heard, Jesus brings their mind to Genesis. Moses and all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So now they are able to understand how those letters were written. Because now look at 1 John chapter 2 verse 8. See the way John will communicate. 1 John chapter 2 verse 8. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you. Because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. Wow. Wow. That's the old man. John is now writing with so much confidence. Look at verse 9. He that saith he is in the light and hated his brother is in darkness even until now. Look at verse 11. John now is speaking with so much confidence. But he that hated his brother is in darkness. And walketh in darkness. And knoweth not whither he goeth. Because that darkness. Hath blinded his eyes. Hear this. Darkness therefore. Is spiritual. In nature. Back to Scotus. Again. For further study. Acts 2.20. Very tricky scripture. Then Acts 13, 11, El Elimas, Elimas, Elimas. Some call it Elimas, Elimas. Put it up for me. John 13, 11. But he, John, John 13, 11, who is on the computer? For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, you are not all clean. Acts, not John. Acts 13, 11. And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind 
not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. So nothing happened to his eye. It was not a damage. But a supernatural veil made it difficult for Elimas to see. And it was for a season. After the man he was preaching to receive the gospel, the thing dissolved. He continued seeing. So this was not a damage. It was a miracle. To stop a distraction from blocking the gospel to reach a man. Is it clear? Because some people want us to say that God is usually doing bad things. Then if you say no, they will give you this scripture. So that's why I'm taking I'm to show you that that darkness was not in his eye. It's just a mist that fell on him to give him temporal distraction so that the gospel will reach the person that he was bewitching. You understand? So spell fell on a wizard. And he was battling to clear the spell so that the gospel would reach the man he was bewitching. I'm almost done for tonight. Are you blessed? Stay with me. I'm almost done. So, Elimas the sorcerer had darkness, which is literal. But look at Paul in Acts 26, 18. Acts 26, 18. He called his message, Acts 26, 18. Brother Paul calls his message to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. From darkness to light. You can also read this at home. Romans 2.19 and Romans 13.12. So you can see that everybody is taking their verbiage from the Achaia or the Bereshit. So in the beginning, darkness was not atmosphere. Darkness was in man or darkness was about man. In the beginning, Light was about man. So everyone is writing from the same place. And John lets us know that. Let me close with brother Paul. 1 Corinthians 4.5 1 Corinthians 4.5 Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. Who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. And will make manifest the counsels of the heart. And then shall every man have praise of God. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. Now brother Paul gives us clear hermeneutics here. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness had shined in our hearts where the darkness was to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God where? In the face of Jesus Christ. So Paul is saying this is what Moses was writing. We are going to explore that seriously tomorrow night. Glory to God. Stand on your feet as I go for you. Zibo dayadada. God who commands the light has shown where? In our hearts. Let there be light. Let there be light. What was that? Christ spoken to the darkness of men's hearts. Genesis 1-3. The earth. <laughs> you remember? The earth. Heaven and earth. You remember? Heaven and earth. The earth. Immortality and mortality. Heaven and earth. The earth. Man. 
was without form, void, darkness. And God said, light which is life be. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And then now we beheld his glory. And it was full of grace and of his fullness. Glory to God. Where is that light tonight? Is in your heart. Lift your hands and begin to give him praise for that light. Begin to give him praise. Begin to give him praise. Begin to give him praise for that light. Mendolo de Bobra de Bele de Boja Kala Namambra Nangre de Gelina Mamama. I'm not hearing your voices at all. Lift your hands and begin to give him praise for that light that has shone in your heart. And begin to give him praise for trusting you with that light to shine in the dark places of the earth. Membro da gonglo da boroko tonekelina managa yanama hosh. Lebro do dolo do bobo brede bele de bobo boroko to sekele ne mana. Enge bodaga lata babara katole gebere ketena malana madoko tolona mododo. Thank you for your light, my kicking at a bosha. Thank you for his life, my reboshi kiariba. Imama ne mo si kiarere. Lit in our hearts, yara na bokumbo na boshaka. Imama na boshaka yara baba na bosaka. Dispelling every darkness, he garibosa. Ema keke na boshi kiarere. Oh mama yana masaka yare be. Oh mama ne mo si kiarere be na bosha. Oh thank you Jesus, mi kare bosaka yara baba. We just seen from the beginning here to be leading us in Kakari Boshanda. Thank you, Father, Matu Bonabosi, Ekandi, and the other day, Bonaboshi, Canaba, Ama Manabosi, we are lit no stumbling in us we have the light of life we see we hear we are lit with the life of God we put on an armor of light we are lit we put on an armor of light for he is in us and we are in him. We are one with the Father. Immortality in us. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my We walk in the light in precision, in precision, in accuracy. We have the life of God. We are living the life. We are Equipped for every good work in the Bokongo, in his purpose and his plan. Oh, my God, I'm going to go to the end of the day. Oh, my God, I'm going to go to the end of the day. 
we declare by his stripes we were healed. We were healed. We were healed. Every infirmity is gone. Oh, my from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. My animal spirits are healed. Our bodies are healed. No infirmity stays here. We we are completely Every infirmity cut out of Oshaka is swallowed up by the light here in the temple. He cut out of Oshaka. 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 He cut Oh, 
We speak to the womb to bring forth children. None shall be barren amongst us. None shall be barren amongst us. It is the will of the Father. He are in his purpose and his plan. He gets the devotion. He brings forth children that are the disciples. To spread the word of God, to spread heaven in the hearts of men, to multiply the gospel, children of the light. We declare your wombs are open. We are the circumstances pray for you. You are healed, Go and bring forth your children. Continue to make power, continue to generate power, continue to generate power. Power that is dynamic, power that is dynamic, power that is focused, power that is being generated. In Sataka Zetebo, in Karaka Zataba, Ataka Zataba, Eke Shadaba, praying in the spirit, praying in the spirit, Reke Shadaba, continue to rise like an edifice, rise like an edifice, Eke Shoto Padeka, Eke Buanda Kazwa. We speak to barren world. We speak to barren world. In Rakata Kasataba, in Kasata Baba, in Kata Kasata, Bendeke Setebe, Reke de Bebebe, in Rada Baba. That world be fruitful. That world be fruitful. That world be fruitful. Leka Shada Baba. Falopian to open. Falopian to open. Falopian to open. Reke Shatada, in Renda Badata, in Reke da Baba, in Reke da Baba. There is no infertility among us. There is no infertility. Those that need the fruit of the womb, receive it. Those that need the fruit of the womb, receive it. By the power of the word, by the power of the word, by the power of the word, you make your desire. You make your desire. 
you make your desire. Make it the I speak to that word. I speak to that word. I speak to that word. Conception step yes. Conception step yes. Rack the baby. That one that may not start. The conception that can never start. This time around is standing. Is standing. You carry to them. You carry to them. You carry to them. No more pretend. No more pretend. No more pretend. Make a shadow. No more false level. No more false level. Raka shadaba. Reke the baba. We don't think around. 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 We tell a cadaba. Men the better. Reka taka shell. Raka 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 taka shell. We tell the other. Correction is back. Correction is back. Correction is back. Mendeke said them. They reckon them. All errors corrected. All errors corrected. Mendeke said them. He's a cadaver. 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 Mendeke said them. We call for Reke said them. Mendeke said them. He's a cadaver. Mendeke said them. He's a cadaver. We speak. Reke said them. We serve God with all our spirit. We serve God with all our soul. We serve God with all our body. He reckoned it. He reckoned it. He reckoned it. We serve God with our spirit. We serve God with our soul. We serve God with our body. Our body is walking to the dictate of our spirit. Our service is total. Our service is total. Our service is total. In spirit, in soul, in body, 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 in spirit, in soul, in soul, in spirit, in soul, in body, We walk in the dictate of the spirit. In our service is total. In our service is total. In our honor system is total. In our loyalty is total. In our faithfulness is total. In our commitment is total. In our giving is total.
We don't walk in the detail of the flesh, rather, we walk in the detail of the spirit. Detection of the spirit, detection of the spirit, detection of the spirit. Our soul, our body is conformed to our safety, total safety, total safety, total safety. Our service is total. Our service is total. Our service is total. Our service is total. Rekedeba and Daka Shate, Mendekesia, Mendeketa, Mendekesia, Rendekesia, 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 We declare that we are serving God's purpose to our generation. 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 Rekeshe de bebe, mendekeshe ada. Reke de bebe, reke de bebe, reke de bebe, reke de bebe, rekeshe de bebe. We fulfill the plan of God. We fulfill the plan of God. We fulfill the plan of God. We save, we save, we save God's purpose to our generation. Rekeshe de bebe, he reke da, he reke da. We propagate the word. We propagate the word. We propagate the word. We propagate the word. We make disciples. We evangelize. We make disciples. We make disciples. We make disciples. We make disciples. We are serving God's purpose. We are serving God's purpose. The zeal. The zeal is coming alive. The zeal. The zeal. The zeal. Is coming alive. 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 Let take a shade of it. Is coming alive. We save with tenacity. We save with commitment. We save. We are faithful. We are loyal. Take a shade of it. In the cause of the ministry. Break a dada. Break a dada. We are bold. We are bold. We are bold. We preach the word. We know what to say. Take a shade of it. The facts of the gospel. Take a shade of it. We amplify in our mouth. Take a shade of it. We declare we are serving God's purpose to our generation. We are serving God's purpose to our generation. We are serving God's purpose to our generation. In our helmet, in our community, in our villages, in our district, in our campuses. Break it, the fire of the fire of service, the fire of service, the fire of service, the fire of evangelism, the fire of discipleship. We study the world, we study the world, the ability to study the world, the ability to study the world. The ability to study the world. Break it, 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 break it. Lakata kashata da ba ba ba, rakashata ba, 
we declare right now. We declare right now. We declare right now. That I shall never from the least to the greatest that we say that we are saving. That we are saving God's purpose. We are saving God's purpose. To our generation. To our generation. To our generation. We save God purpose in our endeavors, in our education, in our profession, in our family, in our houses. We use our profession to save God purpose. We use our profession to save God's purpose. We use our endeavors to save God's purpose. As a student, as a student, you save God's purpose. You save God's purpose. In your studentship, the purpose of God is fulfilling you. The purpose of God is fulfilling you. The purpose of God is fulfilling you. Is fulfilling you. Manda Kashada, Rekeche Debe, Manda Kashadaba, Manda Kashadaba. The Ministry of Reconciliation. You are ambassador. You are ambassador of Christ. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Save. Go for it. Go for it. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Evangelize. 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 Rokosha Debaba. We We stay on the course. We stay on the course. We stay on the course. We catch it now. Bring that cassette down. Bring that cassette down. Break it up, Baba. Break it up, Baba. Break it up, Baba. Bring that cassette down. Break it up, Baba. 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 Break it up, we labor fervently in the place of prayer. We labor fervently in the place of prayer for all saints, for all saints, for all saints, for all saints. We make power. We direct. We direct our power for all saints. We labor in the place of prayer for all saints. We labor in the place of prayer for all saints. Make it again. Oh, ta da 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 da. We are a paphratic in nature. We are a paphratic in nature. We are a paphratic in nature. Recreate the exemplary life of a paphratic. Exemplary life. Of a paphras, a sample life of a paphras is reflecting in us, is reflecting in us in the place of prayer, in the place of prayer for all sins, for all sins, for all sins. We are steadfast, we are steadfast, we are steadfast in of season, out of season, in of season, out of season, continuously, continuously. We catch them, we make power available. Continuously in the place of prayer, no eye service, no eye service. Commitment is seen in us. We are faithful in the place of prayer for all saints, for all saints, for all saints. We pray, we pray for all saints. We pray for all saints. Saints in campuses, saints in campuses, saints in countries, all the continents, all the nations, all the countries. We the same seal, the same seal in prayer that is found in you. The same seal in prayer that is found in Lagos campus. 
The same seed in prayer that is found in South Africa. The same seed in prayer that is found in London. The same seed in prayer. We pray for all sin. We pray for all sin. The body of Christ. We save the body. We save the body. In the place of prayer. We save the body. We save the body. We save the body. We save the body. Begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. Hey, Lebada. Reka Shata Baba. Answers receive. Answers receive. Answers receive. Answers receive. This is the confidence that we have. We receive answers. We receive answers. We receive answers. We, receive answers. we walk in love. Togetherness is found in us. Unity is found in us. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Give him praise. That the saints are standing complete in all of the will of God. We stand perfect and complete. We stand perfect and complete in all of the will of God. Go ahead and give him praise. That Christ is formed among the saints. There's a formation of Christ. That through the teaching of the word of God, the saints are being perfected for the work of ministry. The saints are being perfected. There's a formation of Christ. Like Brother Paul will say, My little children, of whom are traveling but that Christ be formed again. There's a formation of Christ. That the saints are being perfected to do the work of ministry for the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body. That we stand complete and perfect in all of the will of God, strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man. La Gorodobo Sekiala, La Gatomega, 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 that the word of the Lord has free course. It has free course in our churches. It has free course among the brethren. The word of the Lord, it has free course on television, on radio. The word of the Lord has free course and is glorified. La Gatomega, La Angabatomega, Angamato Benga, Angamato Bega, Angamato Bega, Angamato Bega, Doors of Utterance, Doors of Utterance, Agaba Jokola, Agaba Jokola, Agaba Jokola, Agaba Jokola, Angama Tombelea, Angama Tombelea, Angama Tombelea, Angama Tombelea, Angama Tombelea, Agabere Ketubosaya, Agaratobe Sekeana, Agashakaya. In the name of Jesus, lay hands on your body. Begin to command your body to behave. Command your body to be strengthened. Tell your body you are a tool for evangelism. Tell your body you are an instrument in the hand of God. Tell your body you will serve the purpose of God. All my organs are refreshed. All my organs are renewed. All my bones, my joints, my marrow, my blood, totally refreshed, renewed by the Holy Ghost, quickened by the Holy Ghost. Speak to every organ, your heart, your liver, your kidney, your lungs. The life of God is at work in my body. 
are a body. You are an instrument to serve the purpose of God. You are an instrument to serve the will of God. You are an instrument to serve the mandate of God. You are an instrument to serve the assignment of God. Therefore, body, you are healthy. You are strong. You are refreshed. You are well. Like a Tomega Sayada. Egeba Shokoyo. Egeba Shokoyo. Egeba Shokoyo. Angalana. 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 Ashka Baba. Agarata Saya. Agarata Saya. Speak to your body. She do lada. She do lada. She do lada. He brought them out with silver and gold. There was no people among them. Leko shatanama. Flush out whatever is not planted by God. Every feebleness, every weakness, every weakness, every feebleness, whatever is manipulating and harassing your health flush them out declare your body is renewed like an eagle like a oh shagaya oh shagaya oh shagaya, oh, shagaya. ekeboto sekilanama babra gada barakatomea jekolodobo sekelenamaha legoroto sekelere baba La grada barokoto mekedia angebo saki alaba. In the name of Jesus, can I hear that amen like thunder? Say with me, I am well. Say it very loud. I am well. I am strong. My body is alive. My organs are healthy. My heart is healthy. My lungs are healthy. My kidneys are healthy. My blood is purified. My blood is healthy. No infections. No disease. No inflammation survives my body. My body is bought with a price. I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. I am a carrier of divine life. The power that raised Christ from the dead is at work in my body. My body is a weapon, an instrument to serve the purpose of God. Therefore, all my bones, my joints, my tendons, my tissues, my marrow, my eyes, my heart, my ears, my brain, my cells are made whole. Say my skin is fresh and healthy. No skin disease survives my skin my body is like a baby's body my immunity my immunity my immunity my immunity resists every intrusion in the name of Jesus I didn't hear that amen he brought them out in the great exodus with silver and gold and there was no feeble, no mwemwe, no sime sime, no feeble, no jekuredi. There was no feeble among them in the Exodus. When they moved from Egypt to the promised land, they went out healthy. We have moved from darkness to light. No disease. Say disease. I speak to you. Right now. You cannot trespass. Out. The woman was bent. The woman was bent. For 18 years. Jesus said, lose her and let her go. Ought not this daughter of Abraham 
be loose on the Sabbath day, daughter of Abraham, you are the house of God. Whatever has discomforted your body, 10 years, 5 years, 3 years, 1 year, 20 years, 30 years, whatever has occupied your body, that does not look like Christ is flushed out. Hey, 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 is flushed out. Is flushed out. Is flushed out. Is flushed out. You're loosed. You're loosed. In your body, you're loosed. In your organs, you're loosed. Paralysis flush out. Paralysis flush out. Sugar diabetes flush out. High blood pressure flush out. Cancers die off. Your cells are refreshed. Your lungs are healed. They are healed. Your liver healed. Your kidneys healed. Your heart healed. Ayano Sakata. Zebara Katana. Every threat to your heart flush out. And every organ of your body that has experienced any form of damage, any form of damage, receive a creative miracle. It is corrected. It is corrected. Hey, hey, it is corrected. You are healed in your brain, in your cells, in your heart, in your bones, in your fingers, in your toes. You are healed and made whole. Lay hands on yourself. Lay hands on yourself. Begin to command your body to receive healing. To respond to the word of God. Tell your body, respond to the word of God. Tell your body, every organ in my body. Every organ in my body. Respond to the word of God. The word of God is life to those that find them. And hell to all their flesh. The word of God is life to those that find them. And hell to all their flesh. The word of God is life to those that find them. And hell to all their flesh. And Jesus healed them all. Speak to your body. My body responds to the healing word. My body responds to the healing power. My body responds to the healing power. My body cooperates with the miracle power. The power that raised Christ from the dead. My body is re-energized. My body is rejuvenated. My organs are refreshed. I am like a brand new baby. I have stamina and energy. I have stamina and energy. I run, I'm not weary. I walk, I'm not faint. I run through a troop. I leap over a wall Lago Sheka Yanama Legra Dasaka Yadaba In the name of Jesus Listen everybody Moses Moses The Bible says his natural force Was not abated His natural force Was not abated the older he got, the stronger he was. Caleb, at the age of 85, he said, give me this mountain. The way I was at 40, that is the same way I am at 85. Christ lives in you. Christ didn't live in them. Christ did not live in them. Yet they were strong like that. Christ lives in you. Whether it is nutritional or whatever the excuse is. Today by the audacity of the healing word of God, your body is restored to numbers. Somebody say I'm strong. 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 Say, I'm strong. say I am well. Say I am healthy. Say I am healthy. Say I am healthy. Say, Say, I am healthy. Do what healthy people do. Do what healthy people do. Hey! Do what healthy people do. Do what healthy people do. Lagaba Sokia. You shall run and overtake. You shall not be weary. 
Somebody shout glory. And Jesus healed them all. And Jesus healed them all. The older you get, the stronger you will get. You didn't hear that. The older you get, the stronger you will become. In the name of Jesus. That is not natural. But you have the super in your natural. Shakalaraba. See, I am young like a baby. Shakalaraba. Shakalaraba. Sutalaraba. You know the people that Jesus healed? He said their flesh came back like that of a baby. Lepers, their skin came back like that of a baby. When God heals, he makes whole. And the healer is inside you. And it is the job of the healer to maintain his house. You didn't hear that. It is the job of the healer to maintain his house. You are his house. So I declare right now that everything about you is made whole. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a shout as we close. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Grab your offerings. Let's give us to get ready to go. Nine o'clock we are live tonight. Online. Don't forget to follow the teachings on direction. Very important. When you know where you're going, your journey is fast. If you don't know where you're going, time will finish. You're still looking for the place. So you better follow the teaching on direction. It's been on every night, nine to, every night, nine to ten. Then we pray another hour, ten to eleven. If you like, you can sleep at that time. Otherwise, you can continue. You can rewind. You can rewind the prayer and start again and continue. Then in the morning at five o'clock, we are live again, five to six, and we're back tomorrow, quarter to six. God punish the devil. It's a new day. Somebody shout, I hear you. I say, it's a new day. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Are you tired? I say, somebody shout, hallelujah. I want you to be responding. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Lift your offerings up. Father, we give in faith. All those giving online and everybody giving in this building, the blessing keeps flowing. Great grace is upon you. Through your giving, we get the gospel to the ends of the earth. So our offerings are a sweet smell tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Online, we love you. Enjoy the evening. We'll see you at 9 o'clock. Get, get more people to follow the teachings. And we'll see you again tomorrow morning at 5. And then we're here tomorrow quarter to 6. 6, we go live. Be blessed. You can walk up to the pulpit, drop your offerings, and have a blessed evening and enjoy Christ. We trust that you have been blessed by this message. To order the complete series of this message and all the messages by Dr. Abel Daminer, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.